Hey guys, uh, today we're going to talk about the iCharger X6. And for those of you who don't know, this is a 6S uh, standard hobby charger, and it, and it does all kind of chemistries, you know, lead acid, lithium ion, lithium iron phosphate. Uh, pretty much I use it for lithium batteries, and I use it to test my large battery panks because it will do a regenerative discharge at 30 amps. This particular charger is black. Typically they're yellow, but this was a special edition or anniversary edition or something like that. And it's only about seven or eight months old. Unfortunately, the fan is completely shot on this charger. It's completely seized up. It's not spinning at all. And, uh... and here's the error message you get when that happens. Uh, the charger pretty much just shuts off after a few minutes and says the internal temperature is too high. Yeah, just after that quick test there, I see it is very hot to the touch and it actually smells like burning plastic. Um, so today I'm going to show you how to replace that fan. It's actually fairly easy. But the first thing you'll notice is there are no screws anywhere in this device. So the way to get into it is you have to remove the screen. Now it is glued, but you don't really need a heat gun to pry it off. Um, what I do is I look for the edge that has the biggest lip, which is the top right corner on this particular charger. And then you'll want a very small uh, common screwdriver. Um, this is the smallest one I could find. And very carefully just pry up. This is like plastic. It's not really glass. I don't think it's plexiglass either. Um, but I still wouldn't bend it too much because you don't know when or if it's going to snap. So just very carefully peel back the cover. And uh, you can see the adhesive there that I was talking about. Uh, so the next step you want to do is remove the screen to avoid damaging it. Very carefully pick it up from the back. And there's a small ribbon cable connector underneath. This top flap comes up like so. And then you can remove the ribbon cable. And we'll carefully set this aside as well. So then once you have the cover off, there are four Phillips screws you'll want to remove. And make sure you don't lose those guys as well. Just put them on the side. And then this whole top piece should come off. And you may need to pry it a bit. There's a few places you can insert a screwdriver. Just be careful not to stab too deep because you don't want to damage the board or any of the components on it. But you can see it lifts off fairly easily. There we go. So once you have the second lid off, there are five Phillips screws you need to remove. There's one, two, three, four, and there's a fifth small one up here in the corner. The screw that comes out of this top slot is smaller than the rest, so make sure you set that one aside and don't get them mixed up. Now when you go to remove this, uh, this circuit board here, there's a large heat sink on the bottom. And you'll also see here, you see there's a line on the side where the fan is. And the top charging port is the same way. Those pieces of plastic actually slide out. So keep that in mind when you're working with it here. Uh, oh, it looks like I miscounted. There's a sixth screw in the bottom right corner as well. Now you should be able to remove it a little easier. So the fan comes out first. This is a little tricky because the entire assembly gets hung up on this XT60 over here on the left. So, okay. So yeah, this definitely has a very nice sized heatsink to it. Um, this is one of the higher quality chargers that I've seen, and there's just a close-up shot of the bottom of the board if anybody's interested for any reason. So the fan has a small connector on the top, just pull it out. Take note of which way the wires are exiting the fan. They're coming out of the little rounded uh, 30 degree angle, whatever size that is, bend. So remove the four screws. That screw uh, plastic stud's actually broken on that one. So just pull the fan out like so. And here's the specifications on the fan it came with. It is model number DFH3010S. It's a five volt fan at 0 0.25 amps. Um, and also this is a 30 millimeter wide by 30 millimeter long by 10 millimeters deep fan. Uh, so when you're searching, if you search 30 by 30 by 10, you should find something similar to this. And this is the replacement fan I picked up. This is a five volt 0 0.2 amp. So it's slightly less amps, but it did have the same uh, CFM and RPM reading. There's a lot of different versions of these fans. You want to make sure you find one that's got the same kind of airflow because these chargers do get very hot while they're running. 
So you'll see this one has a much longer uh, cable than the stock fan. And unfortunately a different size connector as well, so we're going to have to cut off the original connector and splice it on to the new wire. So I'm just going to snip that one slightly less than the original lead. And I'll snip this one fairly close to the fan. So you'll want to very carefully strip the insulation off of your wires uh, on both the connector and the fan. And these are very small wires, so you want to make sure you don't break them. And I just use a standard pair of wire strippers, but uh, you can see the wire slides through the strippers and doesn't really strip off because it's so small. So the way I usually do this is I hold the wire at an angle and then pull it down. We'll want to select a piece of heat shrink and then we don't need that much. So we're going to cut off the amount we need. So I'll start with the positive end first. We want to slide the heat shrink on the, and then we're simply going to twist them together and apply just a little bit of solder. And yes, that is the way that word is pronounced here. If you don't like it, you're welcome to go watch somebody else's video. And we'll snip off the excess because we don't need that much. Can fold it back just a little bit and slide up the heat shrink. And I'm going to use a slightly larger piece of heat shrink because that last one seemed a bit small. And there we have it. We're ready to reinstall back into the eye charger. So keep in mind the wire exited towards the top right of this plate. And the printing goes downward because we want the fan to be blowing out. So we want the fan in this orientation. All right, so in attempting to do that, I discovered that the holes in the fan are slightly too small for these protrusions to stick through. And in the process of trying to reinstall that, I broke off one of the protrusions. So now I'm only down to two. I just ran a drill bit through that was slightly larger than the original hole, uh, just to widen it a bit. And I'm going to try doing this again. So hopefully two of these screw studs are enough to hold this fan in place. So I can put the original screws back in. Again, just two because I unfortunately broke the other two, but uh, yeah, it seems like it's holding just fine. So we'll reconnect that. Very carefully reinstall the circuit board back into the original case. And you'll want to make sure that these little plastic pieces are in when you do this. And then when you put the fan side back in, you'll want to keep in mind that this rocker switch needs to go through this slot. Um, you want to make sure you don't force it in a way that's going to damage the switch because this switch does not look like fun to try and replace. So I want to kind of lift the board up a little bit and align things and then you can slide it down. Juggling effort trying to get all these plates lined up nicely. All right, I think we're good. Make sure both plates are in. And all the connectors are sticking through like they're supposed to be. <clears throat> so if you remember when we took this out, we had four screws like this, and then we had four pointy screws that are longer and a bit slimmer. So one of the pointy screws will go in the hole right here. And then the other pointy screw will go in the hole closest to the fan in the bottom right corner. And then the remaining four holes will get these standard screws. I don't know if these are machine screws or what, what you would call them exactly. But uh, so the next step is you can reattach your faceplate. It should snap into place as you push it down. So then we have four more pointy screws left to put in. And you can see there is one, two, three, four. Just tighten them down carefully. You don't want to over tighten these screws because you want to make sure you are not breaking or cracking the plastic. And once that's done, uh, you want to make sure this little flappy thing on the connector is in the upward position. Very carefully reinsert the ribbon cable and then press the flappy thing back down. So. You want to make sure you have a good even connection there and make sure the cable is not on an angle. That way you know all your pins are making good contact. Now is your chance to wipe any fingerprints or dust off the screen that you may have. 
and then simply stick the cover plate back on and the original glue should be plenty strong to hold it in place. So now we'll go test it out and see what happens. Alright, so I got the charger here hooked up to my battery pack. We will plug it in. Hopefully it turns on. There we go, turned on. Got 12 volts selected. Charge at 30 amps. And I'll be back in a few minutes just to make sure this fan is running once it's heated up. Alright, it's been charging for about a minute already and the and I can feel it's moving quite a bit in air, so I am very happy that this has been resolved. And you can see the temperature decreasing as well. It's very hot out here. So that's actually hotter than I would like to see. Hopefully this stays within a manageable temperature. So yeah, that's how you replace the fans. If you found this helpful, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them below. And thank you for watching.